Um, I'd like to uh, invite Amit from Unstructured to the stage. Let's give him a warm welcome. Some little testing on the sound. All good? All right. Thanks, Carter. All right, um, developers and software enthusiasts. I'm Ahmed. Um, I work as a software engineer in Unstructured. And today, I'll tell you about how you can get your data rag ready from start to end. So what's the problem here that we're trying to solve? Uh, can I see if anyone is using or trying to use RAG in their daily business cases today? And can I see the ones who would want to try? Well, a good majority. Um, what we see is that LLMs are rising in popularity in terms of a technological capability. And to be able to use them, everybody thinks, how, how it can answer my questions, right? Uh, ChatGPT, you can ask something on the internet, but I, I have some documents at home in my company how I can feed those to the LLM? And the answer is, that data is mostly locked. Behind what? It's locked between different sources. So it can be in Slack. You might want to retrieve your Slack chats. Or it can be in Notion. You, wa you might be wanting to retrieve documentation. How are you going to get that text out? It's, be it's behind different file formats. It's in PDFs. It's in document X files. It's in PowerPoints. How are we going to get all this stuff out? Because as big as the company gets, there are lots of this. And even in a file, there are lots of formats, right? You can structure a PDF in many different ways. You can put the table here. You can put the table there. And when you feed this to a machine learning model, it needs to recognize it. Imagine that you write this software to parse all this data. Now you need to maintain it. You need to scale it, and you need to standardize it so that everyone can use it. And let's take a break. Does anyone do this? Well, we do. We can help you. What we do is oof, we provide all these sources on the left column um, and more, 25 sources from S3 to Notion, Google Drive, Slack. Um, we provide parsing support for many different file types. And we provide you options to parse them with. I'll talk about those later. We standardize the outputs in JSON. We chunk them to correct size and semantic coherence. We embed them so you got your vectors to query. And we upload them to destinations, uh, which are a wide variety, yeah? About the options to parse, so there are two different cases. One of them is you have the text in the file format. Let's say PowerPoints. Your text is already in the file format, right? It's beneath somewhere in that file. But there are also images where that text is represented by pixels. So these are different cases. And if you actually have that text data in the format, you can, our, you can use our fast strategy, which is super compute intensive, um, efficient, and it is fast as the name. But if you have hard to understand, uh, need to make guesses, um, like in images or tables, then you can our, use our high res strategy and if you don't even want to decide, you can just use auto. Well, this is the type of the output that we give. It's a JSON. It gives the type of the element. There's an element ID. There's the content and some metadata. We'll all talk about these. But here are the element types that we support. Well, I have formulas in my documents. Can I just retrieve them? Yes, you can. You can filter based on the element type. Can I just get the addresses? Yes. Can I remove the footers? I don't like them. Not applicable for my use case. Yes, you can remove them because we give that info. Well, document hierarchy. Can I make dropdowns in my application so that each title shows up? 
and then when I click on it, there's some nice little drop down that shows the content. Yes, you can, because we keep the parent ID. It refers to the title of any paragraph, so you can use this information. Well, yeah, summarize, atomize the elements, and preserve document structure and hierarchy. And provide metadata. I want to see the page five. Page five is a special page in my document set where there is always this table in it. Yeah, we provide page number as metadata, so you can filter that in your RAG use case. Here's what the tables looks like after they get parsed. Um, we actually provide them as HTML, so you can actually render them in your application after extracting them from the raw text or the raw file. 20 plus sources, 25 plus file types. Um, chunking. Chunking is important because you want to retrieve something coherent. Um, when you first atomize the file, it might, the info might uh, dilute into different atoms, but then you can get them together, or if it's too big, you can separate it. So this is a paper that uh, a few of our colleagues authored. Um, if anyone wants to check it out, here's the QR. And basically what we do is you can chunk by title, you can chunk by page, or you can actually embed the elements and compare the semantic similarity to see, hmm, should I chunk this? Are they relevant or not? We provide embedder pro uh, integrations. And so this is the three ways that you can use unstructured. First, we're going to do this here as well, uh, partly open source. You can get this code. You can modify it. You can um, do whatever you want with it. It's open. But then you can also use a serverless API that's more appropriate for production use cases. We provide active support. And then to be released, there's the platform which will If you go back here, what serverless API gives you is the partitioning and chunking capabilities, but platform is the entirety of it, and scheduling and other features. This is it. And now we're going to run a code example here with AstroDB. And if you want to get that code, it's in a notebook, you can scan this QR. I made it a script, so I'll switch to there. Let me quickly summarize what's in it. So I got some secrets, say for using unstructured API or for using OpenAI embeddings. I'll load them. I'll define what embedding model I want to use and the dimensionality of it, let's say. I got some variables here that I configure. I tell Unstructured where my fi files are. They don't have to be local. It's just for the use case here. And I tell it where I want it to work in. So I give it a folder that it writes caches into. So I can check those caches as well. We provide some partition settings, some chunking settings. You can see it by title here, maximum number of characters, chunking overlap. An embedding config, I want to use this model. I want to use this provider. And then the destination, which is AstroDB in our case. I want to upload with uh, this, this size of batches and then some other configs. We form a pipeline, basically. I want to show what I have in Astra. I have a backup collection already. Let me make that bigger. So this is there already. I just backed it up in case. 
but let's try to run it and This will be our, my new collection. And let's get this big to see what's happening. As we said, it gets the files in local. It's here. Um, there are some PDF files, some images, some exiles there. It partitions them, chunks them, embeds them, and uploads them to the destination. And you can see all those logs here. Now let's see our new collection. collection. Oop. Here we go. Let's retrieve, right? Let's make some queries. And what do I have there? I'll just ask it from an article. What are the practical difficulties for using deep learning models? That's my query. I'll just embed it, and I'll try to retrieve similar vectors from my destination. Boop. Here's my question. Here are my results. However, there are several practical difficulties for taking advantages of recent adv advances in deep learning based models, blah, blah, blah. So this is how you can make your data ra rag ready. And if you want to keep in touch, this is me. You can find it on social media. But even more importantly, I want to So if you want this in a whole UI, no code, all clicks, just subscribe for a platform. That's it from me. Thank you. <laughs>